Next on the docket, uh, the diary of a madman. James Holmes, he is on trial for killing 12 people in a Colorado movie theater playing the Dark Knight Rises. If you remember this incident three years ago, now prosecutors say he's nothing but a cold-blooded killer and they want, in fact, the death penalty as punishment. The defense, though, has argued and has pled not guilty for reasons of insanity. It is saying that Holmes's diary helps to prove that contention. I mailed it to a psychiatrist right before he went on the rampage and it was introduced to the court as evidence yesterday. Now, this entry explains why his target was a movie theater in instead of an airport. Um, he says, airport, substantial security, too much terrorist history. Terrorism isn't the message. The message is there is no message. Also wrote in another entry, the obsession to kill since I was a kid with age became more and more realistic. Now, I'm not going to go too far afield of this, but if you look at these entries, Mayo, clearly on one day he seems lucid, albeit deranged, but planning with cogent thought as to where he would pick both target and methodology and everything else. Then the next day, it's the ramblings of a complete lunatic here. Um, does this help the prosecution or the defense, or uh, does it depend who's talking to the jury? I think it depends, and then there are a lot of things that we don't know. We're in a bit of a vacuum right now. Uh, you'd want to know whether he was on medication, whether he had continued that medication or had lapsed in his taking of the medication, whether at the time uh, he was seeing a psychiatrist or psychologist, had he continued to do that, all of these things. Uh, in my estimation, if you kill someone, there's a level of insanity no matter what. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe not that rises to the level of getting you off of that charge, but uh, when you look at him across the board, you're going to have to determine based on the totality of the circumstances whether number one he understood what he was doing whether he was mentally capable of resisting urges that he may have had and i think the diary as far as i can see is is probably going to help the defense the one thing that does concern me is how um, it came to be mailed the day before this incident occurred. And that shows a bit so of some planning thought. and some and thought. Forth well, it, it, to your yeah. point, it was mailed to the psychiatrist. And he says in the diary, I've been trying to get help for so long, and I, I, I can't get help. I, I've accepted what I am. Absolutely. You know, to that end, do you think if a jury knew that, you know, I think the impression is, oh, he goes to a mental institution, he'll be walking the streets in two years, that the reality is that's not how it works. Um, if you are sent to a mental institution, A, it's not Club Med, and B, you're not in all likelihood ever going to be walking around on Main Street again. I, I, do you, I've always gotten the impression that people have misunderstood uh, what being sent there actually means. Right, because I think that look, at the end of the day, innocent people were murdered. And if you're on that jury and you don't understand that this person, if they're found uh, not guilty by reason of insanity, if you don't understand that they'll, they could be committed at that point, you could actually think that you know, you'll see them at the McDonald's after the, after the trial. I do think it's important. I think yeah. that people should know that. Uh, now, there was one last thing, Mark. Um, if you're a cynic here, you say, well, wait a minute, if I'm planning to do something and I want to create a diary or some kind uh -huh. of uh, log here that will later on mitigate some of my actions because it shows I'm a deranged mind. And if people remember Vinny the Chin walking around right. in his bathrobe, he the mafia don here and right. for years maintained, in fact, there's a picture of him, that uh, he was an unwell man and that uh, uh, look at my actions. Is there a concern that you can almost seed your defense before your crime? Well, there are writings in there that indicate that he's doing just that, but I think there's going to be other evidence, the long course of treatment, the rupture in his professional life, his personal relationship, that are going to objectively correlate the fact that this man was mentally ill or had a break for a long period of time. The interesting thing in Colorado is that the, the prosecution bears the burden of disproving the insanity beyond a reasonable doubt. So that's a heavy burden yep. for them, but on the, at the same time, there's such a level of deliberation and premeditation in these journals that I suspect, as exactly as you said at the outset, that there were moments of lucidity, and I think that it's going to turn on a jury instruction. Yep. Was he capable of assessing right and wrong at the time that he did this act? And there's certainly a great deal of, of mm. premeditation in those journals. I think it's a tough sell.
I got a couple questions for the guys after this. A uh, woman wrongly harassed by a collections agency just got awarded $83 million. That makes up for a lot of calls during dinner. But we're going to explain why the jury decided to give her such a judgment. And I also got a question for the other side of the table as well after this. Stay with us.